Welcome back to Smackdown and we're kicking it off with some tag team action. We've got Gallus making a return after they failed against Heavy Machinery a few weeks back. We had a nice show in at Elimination Chamber but we're back on the grind towards Survivor Series and Gallus looked to pick up a little bit of momentum on the way. And their opponents By the sounds of it, Matt Hardy, who we've not seen in quite some time. We last saw him, I believe, feuding with his brother Jeff. And oh dear, it looks like he's brought The Fiend with him. A man that did very, very well inside the Elimination Chamber. Eliminating a lot of a lot of superstars, and if he didn't, he did very good. <laughs> but blimey, the fiend and Matt Hardy forming an alliance. Okay, here we go, and we've actually got commentary. <laughs> we've got commentary for some reason. I'm not sure why, but we'll just uh, ignore them. <laughs> I don't know why commentary is on, but. Code of Honor, they've branched over, I think commentary's on, they were on, yep they're on, uh, but yeah Code of Honor appeared on Raw, we're going to have commentary for the entire show, um, because we can't take it off mid show, so we're just going to have to deal with it, but Code of Honor appeared on Raw with Alistair Black and the Ascension, and we knew that Bray Wyatt was involved to a certain extent because of that intro, that Code of Honor used when they debuted and when they came out as a trio along with Baron Corbin as well as their uh, financial backup at least on the red brand but we weren't sure where we were going to see Bray Wyatt and then he appeared in the build up to the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view and now evidently he seems to have maybe recruited Matt Hardy to Code of Honor on the blue side of things and now despite getting the tag in, Joe Coffey not doing the best against Bray Wyatt here. Who is being incredibly dominant against both members of Gallus. Summoning Joe Coffey to his feet. Oh my god, European uppercut there. Oh my god, there's a mandible claw right down the gullet of Joe Coffey. Choking him out a little bit there, but he's put he's retracted back. He's he's pulled back, and now he's looking over to Matt, who hasn't needed to make the tag. Bray Wyatt or the Fiend or whatever he whatever he goes by now has just been so dominant. Oh my God! Oh, an assisted twist of fate. Referee distracted by Mark. Joe Coffey being pinned, there we go, one, two, oh, and that distraction meant that Joe Coffey was able to kick out at a two there. Another woken one, Matt Hardy, managing to control the Coffees, much how, uh, much like how Bray Wyatt managed to, but stiff elbow shot there by Joe, and now going for that guillotine swing managing to haul Matt Hardy's carcass around and now going for the pinfall and Matt Hardy with a kick out there we saw him very very briefly after his feud with Jeff but he didn't manage to pick up many wins I think he might have been in a qualifier for a money in the bank ladder match and it certainly did not go well for him and Joe went for that discus clothesline and Matt Hardy catches him there's a side effect to Joe Coffey. Kicked the gut and a twist of fate. But Mark managing to save his brother yet again. Both members of Code of Honor clambering after Mark. But Mark with a reversal, inverted suplex there to the Fiend, forced to roll. And now Matt Hardy on the assault. Tag made to Mark Coffey now, 
a lot more fresh than his brother Joe. Trying to get hyped up a little bit. But Matt Hardy with that reversal. Bouncing Mark back onto it. Well, onto his back. And now into the corner. Tag made to Bray Wyatt. What could this be? Bray Wyatt, middle rope. Axe handle to the arm. And Mark Coffey, though. Trying to use speed against the Fiend. Oh my god, the Fiend just leaping. Using his entire body weight. Went for a clothesline. Oh my god. Hanging Mark Coffey on the top rope there. With that reversal. And reversal from Mark. Mark and uh, the Fiend seem to be going toe to toe. Oh my god. Elbow to the face. Oh my god. And there's a mandible claw to Mark Coffey. He's got him in the corner. And again, the Fiend pulls back. Taking a moment to glow about what he just did. To the brother of Joe Coffey. Gallus put on an amazing match against Heavy Machinery. Shoulder barge then. It looks like we could be seeing another assisted twist of fate. And Joe Coffey, I don't even think he's going to try and get in. Oh my god, but the Fiend going after him anyways. Code of Honor pick up a debut win on SmackDown. So moving on from that, we've got our TV Championship on the line. The weekly defense. And oh dear. Oh, that's not going to be the only time that we hear that. Because tonight's main event, The New Day put the belts on the line against Dynasty. One of them might be pulling double duty, depending on who it is. Who have we got? Oh, it's Xavier Woods and his bloody trumpet. Going to try and take that championship from Drew Gulak. And the man that was in the Elimination Chamber match. At the pay-per-view. Unfortunately, he was eliminated first, I believe, by Roman Reigns. Drew Gulak. Who has, uh, well, I guess he's gathered quite a, an amount of salt in the two days that it's been since the pay-per-view because of uh, how poorly he performed. Here we go, Drew Gulak, who's got now a point to prove as he hits a drop kick on Xavier Woods, wasting no time. Oh my god, a slap, a disrespectful slap, followed by a big boot. So later on tonight, it must be Kofi and Big E defending the belts, which is no surprise. Flip over there by Xavier Woods. And the onslaught begins as Xavier Woods gets some offense in. Oh my god! Right to the hard cam there. Disrespecting Drew Gulak, the current TV champion. Current longest reigning TV champion as well. And now going for a submission maneuver, it'd certainly be a massive, massive piece of, hum uh, piece of humiliation, pardon me, if Xavier Woods could make Drew Gulak tap out. Oh my god, and Gulak went for a, a back elbow there. Hits a forearm instead. Both of these men. High angle back suplex. And Drew Gulak takes control. Oh my god, kick to the face. Went for a discus clothesline, but Xavier Woods using his speed and now in the corner. Tornado DDT to Drew Gulak, laying him out. Hey, putting the belts on the line against Dynasty, who won number one contendership after, after beating them in the build up to, to Chamber. Irish whip into the corner. Oh my god. And a Gulak attack to Xavier Woods to the back of the head. This vicious assault, or at least it was an assault until it got blocked. Oh, it might still be. Back and forth. And now Irish whip into the corner. Xavier Woods with the flying forearm to Drew Gulak, laying him out. What is Xavier Woods looking for here? He might be going on a roll. Oh my god, and he's managed it, taking down Gulak. And now, Xavier Woods to the top rope. Went for the elbow drop. Gulak dodged. Gulak locked in. Xavier Woods, he's cinching it back. Trying to make Xavier Woods tap out. 
Can he do it? And he does! Xavier taps out to the Gulak. Moving on, we've got some women's division action, and we know that Paige will take on Asuka at Survivor Series in the Raw vs SmackDown Champion vs Champion match. So Paul Heyman has booked a match for Paige, who was victorious at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, taking that championship off of Shayna Baszler. Paul Heyman and uh, Cody Rhodes, unfortunately, both agreed that there would be no rematch clauses, so if Baszler wants a shot at that belt, she's going to have to build herself back up. A very short reign for Shayna Baszler, just, unfortunately, three weeks. But now Paige going to look to take on Asuka and uh, prove that SmackDown is the better brand. So let's see who Paul Heyman has chosen um, to face Paige. Nikki Cross, perhaps? Oh dear. Uh, it looks like she may have two opponents. So that's Alexa Bliss in, oh my god, Code of Honor seem to have recruited maybe a female tag team in the form of Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. We've never seen Alexa Bliss like this before. Maybe she's only going to be taking on one member. We don't know. We know Paul Heyman likes a handicap match. And it looks like she is going to be taking on both members of this new tag team. We don't know who's going to be facing the horsewomen for the women's tag belts. They don't have contenders at the moment. Smile Squad are currently at the top of the list. Smiley, Kylie Ray, and Bailey, who picked up a count out win against Ripley and Mackenzie in the build up to Elimination Chamber. But we're going to have to see there's suddenly a lot of women's tag teams. We've got Simone Slaughter, Fire and Desire, now Code of Honor have inputted themselves. The Horsewomen, Ripley and Mackenzie, I might have already said them. We've got we've got quite a division being built up. And Nikki Cross failing to get much offence in. Former member of Hive Mind with Rosemary. Rosemary and Killer Kelly back on NXT. Which I believe happened earlier this year. And now hot tag made to Alexa Bliss, who performed quite well at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, however, in the build-up, Paige, I believe, almost pinned her. Straight right hook there, by Paige. They had a triple threat match with Ember Moon, and Paige got very close to pinning Alexa Bliss. And maybe the lack of momentum from Alexa has caused her to uh, look very similar to Paige all of a sudden. With this new attire. And, uh, and attitude. And now Alexa Bliss, with some repeated back elbow strikes to the head of Paige, throwing Paige into that corner. This is where the two-on-one advantage might come in. Oh my god, and now grabbing Nikki Cross from that corner. There's a neck breaker, taking out both members of Code of Honor. It's going to be very, very scary moving forward if Code of Honor managed to pick up multiple belts. They could have brand supremacy across both brands. And now tag made to Nikki Cross. Oh my god, who gets immediately taken down by Paige. And now going for a Paige Turner. There it is, centre of the ring. One. Two. Two. A Nikki Cross kicking out at two. And now Paige with the still steps. Referee back up. She went to throw the steps at Nikki Cross. Oh my god, Hurricanrana there. By Alexa Bliss. This teamwork is actually going pretty well. A lot better than I thought it would. Throwing Nikki across there. Eyes turn back to Bliss. Oh my god, dropping her onto the hardest part of the ring, the apron. And now, Paige. With the Paige Turner. To Nikki Cross, laying her out. Knocking down Alexa Bliss. 
She's got to capitalise against Nikki Cross here before Bliss manages to regain herself. Can she hit it again? Rampage, there it is. That has got to be it for Nikki Cross. Paige has got to has got to pick up this win. There we go. And Paige picks up a hell of a lot of momentum there, moving towards Survivor Series. So a match has just been added to the Survivor Series card. We've got only Lorcan coming out. So Cody Rhodes has offered to Paul Heyman um, for another brand versus brand match, a free on free this time. Um, I believe it might be Tornado, but I'm not entirely sure. And that is the Elite versus the Undisputed Era. So because of the confirmation for that match, Paul Heyman has quickly added in this match so that Adam Cole can advertise the Survivor Series matchup against the Elite of Raw, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. So Adam Cole looking to prove himself after the the bout at Elimination Chamber. He did okay in that Chamber match. Unfortunately, not good enough to win himself the belt. However, you've got to think that maybe if Undisputed Era win at Survivor Series, then they might get championship opportunities at No Man's Land. We know that Kyle O'Reilly is doing pretty damn well in that NXT tournament. Adam Cole there. Oh my god. Flipping out that back suplex into a neck breaker. Super kick there, laying out only Lorcan. He hasn't brought Undisputed Era with him. Like I said, Kyle O'Reilly busy training for the finals of the NXT Championship Tournament. He might have to pull double duty. We know that Roderick Strong is injured after about earlier on in the year with the Cruiserweights. And hasn't returned since. Hurricanrana there. By Adam Cole. After the Chamber pay-per-view, there's definitely going to be a target on the head of current WWE Champion Cesaro after his massive underdog win. Another super kick there. Obviously sending a message to the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. The Young Bucks been very impressive over on Raw. Kenny Omega, maybe not so much, but... Maybe one day we'll see Adam Cole and Kenny Omega go one-on-one -on -one and find out which is the better. Might have to be next year once we've done a new draft. There's a back suplex there by Adam Cole. Adam Cole going for a super kick but missed. Thunderous Lariat there. Taking down Cole as only Lorcan. Looks to make a name for himself. He could get an opportunity at maybe a mid-card belt. If he was to pick up a big win against somebody like Adam Cole. Oh my god, Enziguri there by Cole. Who might be regretting not bringing down the Undisputed Era with him. Adam Cole now setting up for something. Oh, super kick. Into a straight jacket German. One. Two. And only Larkin kicks out at two. The momentum behind that super kick was, well, it was pretty damn incredible. Throwing a punch there, but only Lorcan fighting back with a knee. And now looking to lift up Adam Cole, who rolls out of it. Super kick to the knee. There's a last shot. Cole with the cover. That's the move that took out Pete Dunne back when he was on Raw. And that's the move that's going to end the match and give Adam Cole a win. Here we go, main event time. We don't have any introductions. I'm not sure why. This show has been a little bit all over the place with a commentary and for some reason no entrances for the main event. We had an ad break apparently. Oh my god. Shinsuke Nakamura attacked Big E and Big E's just tagged himself in because of it. Single leg drop kick. Nakamura picked up a big win over Kofi Kingston. Oh, and a slap to the chest. Nakamura rolling out there. So this is for the Tag Team Championships. Winners go to Survivor Series to represent SmackDown in the Triple Threat Tag Team match. Powerbomb there by Nakamura. And obviously Xavier Woods not at ringside. Backstage instead recovering. Tag made to Kota Ibushi. 
as these two men take on Big E. Oh my god! Elevated neck breaker maybe? I was going to call it a Thunder Valley, but it certainly weren't. It looked almost like a Grand Amplitude, but a neck breaker version. Oh my god, and now roundhouse kicks. Savat kicks, left, right and centre. Oh, and Big E having to throw Kota Ibushi over the top rope there. Ibushi obviously a lot quicker than Big E, despite Big E being very quick for his size. Oh my god, Ibushi went for a, a handspring Pele. Oh, and gets hit with a clothesline by Kofi Kingston. Kota Ibushi trying to regain himself on the apron there after this assault from Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston's been on top of this match. Oh my god, and he was trying to trying to leap to the outside maybe, but Nakamura had different plans. Looking for a suplex. Oh, he might have crashed and burned with Ibushi, but I don't think Nakamura cares at the moment. I'm not entirely sure if Ibushi cares, just as long as they get some offense in. That might change the course of the match. For Dynasty, snap German suplex there by Kota Ibushi. I think we're probably going to start seeing next week and the following week um, some more some more people that are going to appear at the Survivor Series pay-per-view in the traditional tag matches, the Raw and SmackDown tag matches. We know that Raw's had some qualifiers for the big women's match. SmackDown could just be picking them rather than qualifiers. Oh my god, snap dragon! Kofi Kingston's foot is on the rope, but the referee can't see. It doesn't matter anyway. He's kicked out, leaping up into a into a moon stomp, a mushroom stomp, or whatever you want to call it. And now Ibushi. I think Kofi wants Nakamura. After he suffered that loss, he's happy for Nakamura to get into the ring. Oh my god, kitchen sink there, and another one. Kofi reverses that single leg drop kick. Oh my god, went for a suplex. Knee to the top of the head. And now, inverted power slam by Nakamura to Kingston. Nakamura is on fire as he takes on Kofi Kingston and Big E. Big E desperate for the tag. Oh my god, kick to the gut. Went for a Kinshasa, but Kofi Kingston with the reversal. We've not seen anybody reverse the Kinshasa yet. At least not that version of it. Boom drop there by Kofi Kingston. By a very, very close two count there. Oh my god, what is Kofi and Big E doing? Up, up, down, down. That's not the way it's meant to be, but it doesn't matter. Oh my god, Kota Ibushi there to break it up. That could have been the end. Very, very similar to their first match, their first confrontation. Oh my god. Dynasty was a little bit too much for the New Day to handle. It was a very quick match. Snap DDT. Might be looking for a tag to his partner Ibushi and he manages to make it. What have these two got planned? There's a power slam. Springboard by Ibushi into a drop kick. There's a splash by Nakamura. Kofi with a Kronko Buster in the corner, pummeling strikes to Ibushi, followed by a European uppercut. Kofi Kingston and Kota Ibushi, a dream match we never knew we needed. And a reversal there by Ibushi, climbing to the corner. Oh my god, trouble in paradise, wiping out Ibushi mid-air. One. Two, and Nakamura breaks it up. That could have been it. We've never seen Kofi Kingston do that. Kota Ibushi got the shock of his life there. I don't even know if Kota is conscious. Kofi Kingston, I don't know how he is doing this. Irish Whiplow into the corner. Might be looking for another Kronko. It went well for him last time. And now Dynasty, both members in the ring. Enziguri there to Kofi Kingston. Nakamura's got to get out of the ring before the referee hits a five. And now Kofi Kingston, oh my god, went for a suplex. But it looked like Nakamura 
pulled Ibushi back down, but it, it was no use. There it is, suplex to the centre of the ring. Ibushi really struggling to get the momentum back. Irish whip though. Oh my god, throwing Nakamura out of nowhere there. And now setting up for a powerbomb maybe. Oh, Kofi Kingston tried to roll out of it. Last ride powerbomb. Kofi Kingston's out. Oh my god, and that's it. Dynasty have won the belts. An incredible performance by the New Day despite their loss. New Tag Team Champions Dynasty. What a match. And they go to face the Revival at Survivor Series. 